And like, it's not because his hamstring didn't have the length because it didn't have the strength. So I think like it's important to understand basically from like a fundamental level for injury prevention, like how our bodies are kind of designed. Injuries happen when the load and demands exceed our body's capacity. Hello and welcome to the Eat More Carbs podcast. I'm Jenna Fisher and I'm here with my co-host Riley Beatty. Today we have a very special guest on to help answer some questions related to movement and that is Dr. Hannah Briel. Hannah, can you take a couple seconds to introduce yourself? What's up? Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I am a physical therapist and I'm a co-owner with Made to Move Physical Therapy. We are located here in Charleston and in Somerville. So we are a performance physical therapy clinic, which means that we work with active individuals and athletes to help them overcome frustration pain and injuries, help them get back to doing the things they love, and ultimately just help people stay active and healthy for life. We're so excited to have you on the podcast today to answer some questions about movement. Before we jump into some of those questions, we do a high and low segment where we share just a little bit about our week, what's going on personally for us, maybe the good part, and maybe the part that we wish had gone a little bit differently. Riley, can you kick us off today? Yeah, I'll start off with my high for the week. As everybody who has maybe listened to the podcast or maybe you're just tuning in, we are big women's health supporters here on the podcast. And one of the things that we're always talking about is periods. So a huge high for me this week is one of my long-term clients got her period back. Super, super big deal for her. She's a runner and she's been struggling with a lack of a period for a long time. So super excited that she got her period back. So that's my high. My low also kind of has to do with women's health and it's kind of a little bit of a tangent, but what's up with the padding in bras? Like why <laughs> is it 2024 and we still have the pads and bras? I always think about this because every time I do my laundry they fall out and they're floating around my laundry basket they're always crumbling up and always making me mad so we need somebody to kind of like market disrupt the bra industry do you want the pads or are you just like upset that they like come out I think I want the pads but like why are they not just in the bra the ones that are built in are almost weirder because they're like in the wrong place and you're like that's not really where that belongs so I'm like who's designing this I don't know that's the thing like I'm like who is yeah I don't know maybe you have a bra expert on. That is a good idea. Aerie recently, they have bras that like aren't the classic bra like shape. I'm like, how did no one think of this until now? They're so comfortable. There's no like gapping. It's not this like big open semicircle. You got go try it. It's great. We'll have to try that out. Hannah, <laughs> do you have a high and low? Uh, yeah, not really related to periods or bras. Hi, I'd say so. We are being thrown an engagement party tomorrow, which is fun. Mm. Um, and my parents, unfortunately, of course, it's like the first rainy day that we've had in like a month. So a lot of my friends are coming into town, so I'm excited for that. A low has been, I don't know if y'all ever have those weeks that you just like don't like the food that you bought or made or like have at home. I just haven't had an appetite all week, which is really weird for me. And today I, I like heated up my meal prep and I looked at it and I took one bite and then I threw it away and ordered a smoothie. I was like, I just can't, I just can't eat this right now. It, everything was just like, so that's a little frustrating. We'll, we'll circle back on that. Well, sorry that you have to be on a food podcast on the week that food is not really appetizing. What was your meal prep? Steak bites, rice, and asparagus. Totally good. Totally normal. Like when I normally order it, I love it. It's just like all of my food at home is gross right now. Sometimes you just go through that where you're just not feeling it. You kind of get like stuck in a routine. This is what I find sometimes of like eating the same things or ordering the same things and you just kind of get into that routine. So sometimes it can be kind of challenging to like break it up or switch out of it. I will wrap up our high and low section my high for the week is that as I'm always testing new recipes, I found a delicious way to reuse your turkey leftover from Thanksgiving that I was super excited about. My carbohydrate that I used for it, this plays into my low, was going to be tortillas. And I was like, this is going to be fantastic. Like, I am so excited. And I grabbed my tortillas out and I guess I had just forgotten like how long it had been since I'd purchased them and they were moldy. <laughs> so... Oh no. I tend to do that though with like, with some things that you put in your pantry. I just like, I put it in there. I forget it's in there. And then when I'm like, oh yes, like I have this great idea. It's going to be delicious. And then half of my ingredients were not good. But the good thing is, is that I I replaced the tortillas for sourdough bread, which I did have and was not moldy. And I think it turned out even better than it would have with the tortillas. Hannah, we're really excited that you're on. We have some questions for you today about mobility, injury recovery, lots of fun things to talk about. So we're really excited to 
ask you a couple questions. Movement is definitely not our area of expertise, even though we both like to move for fun. So our first question says, can you explain the importance of mobility and flexibility in maintaining an active lifestyle and how can individuals work on improving these aspects? Yeah. So I feel like two big words there, like mobility and flexibility. And those are words that I think people can get like really interested in of like, do I have the right mobility? Do I have the right flexibility? Like, am I going to be okay and healthy? And so to me, mobility is really just like the ability to move around and to be active and independent and be able to do the things that you want to do. So like for some people, they want to be able to go to the gym. They want to be able to play on a sports team or, you know, go skiing, play tennis. And then for a lot of us, it's just like in our daily lives, like I have dogs. So like picking up the dog food or like lifting boxes, walking my dogs or standing up from a chair, like things like that. I think people don't really realize that one of the things that we say in school all the time, like use it or lose it. We also said like motion is lotion. Like as humans, our bodies are designed to be very active to the point where like, I'm sure y'all know, you know, like certain processes don't happen unless we move or unless like muscles are contracting and we are moving. And like, obviously my company is named Made to Move for a reason. In terms of flexibility and mobility, people like often over-focus on flexibility and really like flexibility is having the range of motion to like complete the task. But you also, need to be able to have like the capacity and the strength to complete that task. Like if I'm trying to squat, I need the range of motion in my knees, my hips, my ankles, all the things to get into that squat. But then I also need a certain amount of like strength and ability to stand up and to handle the force that my quads just produced. So I think like to your question of like, how can people improve these things? That's where for so many of us, like the gym is, you know, our solution. And I think like, you know, we all go to the gym too, because like we want to look good. And a lot of us like personally, like, the gym is my sport. So like foundationally though, the gym is where we build strength. It's where we build and maintain that range of motion. It's where we build the capacity to be able to handle the demands of our life. And like for some people, they go to the gym because they wanna be able to play tennis or they wanna be able to play soccer. But it's interesting to think about like most of us now, we sit at a desk or like we sit at a computer and like we're pretty sedentary with most of our jobs because of technology. And so on every corner, you see a gym where we like sit all day and then we go put in this like little hour of activity. And while that's like, it's great, it's a great start. We also have to be really intentional to get that movement that used to be like a part of our daily lives. Like if you think about, we don't wash our own dishes, we don't wash and dry our own clothes. like. A lot of people don't even stand up at their stove and cook their own meals. Like they pop it in the microwave. We all drive cars. We've taken like every bit of natural movement out of our day and we've, we've put it in this like one hour. So like I do, I am a huge believer that like the gym is where most people are going to like maintain mobility, flexibility, strength to, you know, have an active lifestyle. But I also think that like we have to do so much more now just in our daily life to just move more. What tips do you maybe have for people that are working a very sedentary job to like incorporate more movement throughout the day? And what would that maybe look like? Yeah, the most like simple and not sexy thing, but I I love taking walks. Like it is the simplest thing to do of just like getting up as as regular as you can. And like for some people, I know that's, that's more often than not. That's like the biggest heavy hitter. I also think we've been really taught to like be very very rigid when we're sitting and like we need to be constantly moving so like personally I'm a fidgeter and so I like naturally am just like constantly moving all the time I think standing desks are great it's not that you need to stand like all day long it's that it gives you a lot of different options but even like lean back move like slouch forward like bring one leg up on your chair like stand up and lean to the side. Like it's, it's almost just like find ways in the middle of work to be kind of constantly moving and then like find ways maybe like every hour to actually like get up and walk around. If you like some people like 
literally get on the floor and stretch. I'm like, I don't really know. Kind of depends on your floor. But I think a walk is a really like low barrier thing that most people probably just aren't doing. Is there an amount of time that you, like someone should spend like walking or stretching every hour that you recommend to kind of work in that benefit? Or is it just like movement is movement? Well, I mean, yeah, it really is like movement is movement. We are just like not supposed to be sedentary. I see some people recommend like every 20 minutes, get up. And I'm like, yo, we got work to do. Like, that's not really realistic. <laughs> It like, it takes me 20 minutes just to get into a certain task. I think like every hour to two hours, honestly, for me is what's actually realistic, but also like a great way to make yourself get up is to drink a ton of water. And like, you just naturally have to get up and walk to the bathroom. And then when you sit back down, you're probably gonna like change positions. So like at minimum, every two hours. I think you have a lot of really good points in there because something that we see often with nutrition is it's like this all or nothing approach, right? Like setting unrealistic goals, trying to, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna eat healthy, so I'm gonna not eat all these things and things like that. And I think the same thing, at least in the past, like I've thought about with movement and mobility, right? Where I'm like, I don't have time to work out for an hour and a half and then do an hour of yoga. Like I don't have time, like nobody has time to do that. So I really love like your little tips that you mentioned, just like moving your leg, or, like moving your, moving forward and backwards. Cause I think those are really practical things that people can apply and people can start implementing. Yeah, it's ironic that we're like, you know, we're, we're in a society where technology has just taken out so much of our movement, but then we like shame people for not moving for three hours a day and like having a gym membership, a yoga membership, walking your dogs all the time, you know, eating home cooked meals. And I'm like, yes, there are definitely ways that we can improve, but like, let's, let's give people realistic information because otherwise, like, they're going to feel so bogged down and, and so guilty. They're just not going to do anything. And that doesn't help anymore. I think something that I've really noticed now that I'm pregnant is, like, mobility and flexibility are two things that I really took for granted. The fact that I had the privilege that I could reach down and tie my shoes and I didn't have to sit down to put my shoes on. Like, things like that are things that I really, really took for granted. And I've definitely been very humbled, you can say, in this journey. Yeah, that's definitely something that, like, I mean, thank God, like, it is temporary temporary, you know, because it's like you have this big thing that's preventing you from doing that. But think about that applied to like in 60 years from now, hopefully we live that long, right? Like not being able to stand up from a chair or like get up from the toilet by yourself. And like as, you know, 20, 30 year olds, it's really hard to picture one day not being able to do that. But like the, the fear of that is sometimes like the thing that should keep you you know, doing squats and like being in the gym, because if you don't use those things, like we just take them for granted right now because we, you know, we can do them and it's easy. Like walking in here, I saw this, this older lady and, and she was on a walker with her husband and like really struggling. And we just, and I'm like speeding past her and um, we just take it for granted. Oh yeah. I even think of like family members that I have that were once at one time, very, very active people. We just kind of took for granted that we could potentially just continue to move without putting in that effort. And now we're at a different point in life. And you know, I wonder what we could do differently in order to maintain this sense of mobility in order to do that, you know, at a more advanced age or advanced stage of life. Yeah, totally. For athletes, this is actually a mistake that I made now and I'm learning so much right now even just in this podcast about mobility and flexibility but something that I really struggled with when I was playing was like it was similar right like a two-hour block of training right so all of my exercise activity or physical activity is coming in you know a block throughout the day but then I am so tired from that training I'm not getting out of bed I'm not going on a walk and I spent a lot of my time injured when I was playing college soccer. So what are things that maybe like I could have done better? What are some things that could have been maybe like implemented at least on a very basic level for like some of our really busy athletes or, you know, Ironman um, recreational athletes that are training really hard and don't necessarily have the energy or the capacity to like maybe go for a walk. Yeah, I, I saw this study recently that like looked at all these CrossFitters and looked at their act activity like outside of doing CrossFit. And these were people that were working out like eight hours a day. 
Um, so their job was working out and like Jeffrey Adler who won this year yeah and he was like I don't move unless I'm like doing my four to eight hours of fitness and I was kind of like well of course because you just moved like for so long like it's okay to rest for like athletes like like what you were saying I think it's always interesting like people really in our country like put athletes on a pedestal and we think that like athletes are the healthiest people in our country you know like that football player is like so healthy. And I'm like, there is such a a spectrum of like, when you get super, super close to athletic performance, you're farther from like general health and wellness because your whole life is about how can you perform during that 90 minute game? How can you perform when you get the ball to the point where like we, God, I just, there's so many injuries, especially like watching football, you know, all weekend long. I'm like, there's so many injuries. I think a big heavy hitter, I'm not sure if you, if you have, this or not but I think most colleges do most middle schools and high schools right now don't is strength training I get frustrated when you know a lot of parents and youth athletes are told that what their kid needs to be doing is stretching and foam rolling and you look at this kid and he's He has the flexibility he needs for his sport, but he can't do 10 air squats without being really tired. Can't do a hamstring bridge. He, you know, can't do a deadlift and he gets injured sprinting. And like, it's not because his hamstring didn't have the length because it didn't have the strength. So I think like it's important to understand basically from like a fundamental level for injury prevention, like how our bodies are kind of designed. Injuries happen when the load and demands exceed our body's capacity. So if you think about like a cup, I use this analogy all the time. If your cup is eight ounces, but you pour a gallon into it, it's gonna overflow. And that's what happens when we get injured. And so really like injury prevention is just looking at like, what are the demands that we're placing on ourselves? And are we doing the things necessary to be prepared for those. Someone like you mentioned, you know, being in college and being a collegiate athlete, I think there there might have been probably a lot of things from like a recovery standpoint, like how much were you eating? How much were you sleeping? Were you crushing yourself so much in this two hours that like you felt like trash the rest of the day to move? You also probably had like a lot of stress on yourself too. I also think it's okay like for there to be seasons of life, especially like when you're in season, to focus on performance and like focus on your sport. But a lot of times those athletes get out of school and and they don't have the tools or the experience with just like general health and wellness because all they've ever done is practice and play and, and kind of crush themselves. What was your experience like? I definitely think that I felt like I was let loose. I think once I retired from sport, I do think a big thing also was you hit the nail on the head when you said strength training because something that I suffered with and we talk to athletes about this all the time is like body image right so I didn't want to lift weights because I already felt like I was bulky because I was an athlete so I was so scared of getting into the weight room because of like the body image you know our societal pressure to be thin things like that so I definitely think I was avoiding strength training because of that it's unfortunately like it's so common for females you know and like a lot of females don't really even have like access or attention in the weight room and so it's already something that we're kind of nervous about it's something that like I'm not sure how like the the younger girls feel now but I was kind of felt like you know this is for the boys this is for the football team if the football team is in here like y'all got to get out and then we throw in like body image things and then you're being handed like two pound weights and you're like ah, you shouldn't go any heavier than that and I, I think it's gotten a lot better but I think that overall like athletes in general are playing and practicing here and if they did more strength training, like this wouldn't be as as demanding or stressful on them because they would just have a much higher floor, a much higher capacity to deal with the stresses of playing soccer. Like it wouldn't be as stressful to them, if that makes sense. That makes complete sense. I saw it a lot of the time in the collegiate level when I was working in college sports, now kind of on the other side of it, especially with sport specialization, nothing wrong with it. But what happens is you're good at a sport, so you play the sport more and that's all you do, right? You're good, 
So you play the sport, you play the sport, you're not necessarily looking at the weight room, you're not looking at your nutrition, you're not looking at the mental health side of things, you're just doing more of that sport. So that discrepancy that you just showed is even bigger now. Riley, are you saying it's a good thing that I wasn't really good at a sport? What sport did you play, Jenna? You know, I was never a collegiate athlete growing up. I swam, I ran track, and I played soccer. So I was doing a whole bunch of things. It's interesting, though, that you mentioned the the football team is in the weight room, so you got to get out. Because I vividly remember being in high school, and I did strength and conditioning for like one of my classes but I'm pretty sure it was like at the very end of the day and as soon as the football team walked in like the football strength coach was like everybody else leave everyone else is out now and that was like we're done yeah like it didn't matter even if like you weren't done with class it was just like oh the the people who this room was designed for for. are here to use it exactly Mm -hmm. like we're just here to use it because they're they're, they don't need it right now and you should be lucky that you get to use the same facility oh my god yeah Yeah. it's like gross and dirty and rusty and like i just think about my high school weight room and it was like the size of this room it was it was so so tiny and it had like the metal weights (laughs) yeah Yeah. And I remember I played volleyball for like, like Jenna, I was similar to you. I uh, was not super athletic and I, I played volleyball and I got super sick, had to quit, tried soccer, was horrible at that. But like my first year, I remember they were like, okay, we're just, we're going to do power cleans today. And like, we were all like, what the heck is a power clean? And they were like, oh, the football players do them. Like, well, we're just going to do them too. And like, those were probably some of the ugliest power cleans I have ever performed. But here we are now, come so far. Trying to change, change it for everybody else, right? I do think it's getting better, but I still think there is a lot of just like misinformation because if you think of like a high school girl right now, her her mom, a woman that is 50 right now, they were of the generation that was most taught to be tiny, to be skinny, don't lift weights, don't eat carbs, don't eat fats, lifting is bad for you. And like, you can't really blame them, especially if they're not in health and fitness, like they've never been taught the new things. So then like they're teaching their kids that and they're still, because they still believe those things. And so it's also like, Yes, we do need to help the current the current youths, but we also need to still address like the the people that are that are teaching the youth athletes. Oh my gosh, yes. I call this the slim fast mom era because that is so true. Where they just have this very ingrained ideal that we you know we should be in jazzer size and only do cardio and we should eat very little and fit into a size zero all of our life. I do see a lot of those clients where they are kind of working through even their own misinformation and misconceptions about nutrition and how we can move our body and things like that. I'm sure you see a ton of like misconception around the idea of like sports physical therapy. And that's just one of many. Yeah. I saw this commercial the other day or it was on Instagram. Do y'all remember like the yo play like key lime pie like and it was like this whole commercial of this Mm -hmm. woman like talking to herself of like well if I eat this like I can just like work out a little bit harder and then you know the yo play yogurt shines through and it's like this is only 80 calories so you can still feel good about yourself and I remember like the special k diets you're just eating all of special k's foods like that doesn't make any sense at all on Instagram they're calling it an almond mom moms always have the best intention it's just like crazy to look back and see how much that was thrown at us it's interesting to think about like if we weren't in health and fitness would we have ever learned any differently I think that's one of the biggest things that like I've noticed at least like being on on social like sometimes saying things that like I'm saying every single day that I'm just used to conveying or like educating on and then somebody comes across my page and the idea is so radical to them because it is so different from when they have been previously taught so like Gatorade. I'm always like, drink Gatorade. And like, everybody's been told like, Gatorade has too much sugar. I'm like, that's literally one of the three purposes of a Gatorade. So like me promoting Gatorade, like it gets a lot of hate just because it's such a different perspective than what we've been taught. It's like so far from like their beliefs and like people are very attached to their beliefs and like they're very personal to them because like I guarantee they grew up being like, well, I was told not to drink Gatorade. I still see people all the time at like CrossFit competitions and they have a Gatorade Zero and I'm like, you know, that's like literally doing nothing. It doesn't even have as many electrolytes in it. Even when we first started this podcast, if you look up carbs on the podcast, like if you search it in, every single podcast is about how you can decrease or cut out carbohydrates. And then here we are like, eat more carbs. <laughs> 
one of my meal prep containers I thought of y'all is it's low carb and I add rice to it but I just like the steak but it's called the, the low carb summer shred steak bowl and it's like it shreds you because it's low carb and I'm like oh my god it's just so it's still just so like strongly used in marketing like sculpt and shred and tone I'm like those things mean build muscle <laughs> Like there is just one solution to get all those things and it is to eat more so that you can build muscle. Exactly. That's a great example that even if you do have something that you really enjoy, you can just add something to it to create like a full performance plate where you have carbohydrate in there, like adding rice, adding pasta to a dish that is marketed that way. If you like it, like amazing, just adjust it to your own goals. So we have some questions for you, Hannah, that we always like to ask at the end. Before we do that, is there any other tips that you have, maybe any myths that you want to bust when it comes to sports, nutrition, physical therapy, mobility, or flexibility? I am just such a big promoter of strength training. If, if like you're not strength training, it's really hard to be like, oh, well then you should stretch or you should foam roll. It's like, let's do the thing that like is going to help like 99% of your problems. And then we can kind of like put in these little fun fads and tools if you feel like they make you feel better like we gotta kind of just like stick to the basics if you really want to you know be active long term and I think people think that they want that but then they aren't really willing to do the things to get them there I'm gonna drive over to the clinic and give you a hug because I feel that in my bones (laughs) yeah I bet you do we're all just like living the same life here yeah I think we've made a very complex topic we've oversimplified it but then we've made it even more complex by oversimplifying it if that makes sense like squats carbs the basics it works and we've made it way too complex yeah it's almost like people have made it too complex one just because of like misinformation but also to like make it feel fancier than it is then in reality like people waste their time and their money on the things that don't work we have the same problem just in like different parts of health and wellness like (laughs) what we were talking about before of like we just need to move more but then we're told like if you don't sit when an upright posture your hip flexors are going to wreak havoc on your spine and I'm like so now you're locking people in to sitting like this for eight hours like how do you think your body feels with that so I do have a couple questions actually our podcast is called eat more carbs so I would love to hear what your favorite carbohydrate is I love a bagel it doesn't have to be toasted if I just have like a sleeve of bagels with me and I'm like raw bagel need carbs like here we go I have a rosemary bagel with cream cheese and like I had it yesterday and I was like why don't I I eat this every single day. It was so good. I love it. What's your favorite pre-workout fuel? It's normally something that like I can easily eat in the car on the way to the gym because that's normally how it works. Like the Trader Joe's Pop Tarts are delicious. Um, and I'm normally just like trying to get something in me, but I would say like a bagel, a banana, or a pop tart. I've never had the Trader Joe's pop tarts. Do you have a favorite flavor? It's the pomegranate, I think. It's the one that definitely has like all the pink icing and sugar on top. I'm gonna have to try them. What's your favorite post workout fuel? If I'm not gonna eat for a while, like a big meal, like I definitely try to do a protein shake, but then I normally work out in the evening. So, like, whatever I'm having for dinner. So, you know, just like a normal dinner. Definitely like love some pasta, love some rice, just like a basic meal. We, love shoes here and Jenna's also on the hunt for running shoes so what's your favorite pair of kicks oh have you tried noble no I haven't wow okay so I am a huge noble fan because they have runners they have trainers they have lifters they're also like the official like sponsor of crossfit i literally have my runners with me they're great because they're really easy to put on they're cute and like they're not like minimalist but they're also not like hokas i like wear these every day and i probably need to get I have like five pairs. I could definitely use a new one. So go look at Noble. Okay. I'm going to have to check it out. Hannah, if people want to follow you or find you on social media, what is the best way for them to do that? I am not active really on my personal page um, unless it's like, stories of my dogs and we are super active on like our, our physical therapy page so that's made to move pt the two is the number two i still post some things of my dogs on there but you gotta your dogs are it. so cute yes i love them <laughs> okay so made to move pt is how you can find hannah and ask her questions if you have questions related to movement to kind of summarize some key takeaways from today it's okay to go back to the basics whether that be movement related or food related if you have questions for riley and i you can always ask us through the podcast you can find us on instagram we're at the eat more carbs podcast you can find myself at jenna.fisher.nutrition and you can find riley at riley.baity.nutrition thank you so much for listening please make sure you rate subscribe and review and as always always remember to eat more carbs.